lot of the sound stuff is again trial and error i mean it's like how much time do you want to spend how much money do you have how ridiculous is the expense of the gear these days what resources can you put together to trial and error a lot of different things i mean i've experimented a lot mostly to find that what i originally thought was a good idea was a good idea like you know i i so i use Fender tube amps, which I basically used off and on since I was 16 years old. I mean, I use mostly a Vibrolux. I don't have the one I got when I was 16, but I but I but I got one when I was 16, and I basically that's been the amp I use more than any other amp, and it's just two 10-inch speakers with 40 or so watts of power and very basic. Yeah, this is not one. This is a Pro Reverb, which is very similar but just bigger speakers. But I like it because. I like the the Pro or the Vibrolux. They're both about 40 watts. Pro has two 12-inch speakers. The Vibrolux that I usually use has two 10s. It just gives a clear, accurate sound with a little bit of warmth. You know, you know, there's some amps made now that are that are almost more for jazz, but they just sound like to me like you've plugged into a PA system. They don't offer any character, any color. And to me, I just got acclimated to the sound of a guitar amp that has a certain sound. I don't quite know specifically what it is, but it's a circuit that every guitar amp of a certain era had some form of, and that circuit gives a sort of guitar sound. So I like that colored sound. The Fenders color it a little bit, and they're just very basic. They 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 can be worked on easily. They you know. And they just give, you know, what I'm looking for is a clear, warm sound with just a hint of flavored character that doesn't get distorted at a low volume that you can, you know, get a lot of volume out before it starts to break up. So that just usually means heavy duty speakers. I use different speakers than the originals that have bigger magnets. So they're just able to handle a little more before they start to sag. The model is Cannabis Rex and they're made out of hemp. So... They have that funny name, Cannabis Rex, and there are just a lot of jazz guys use them. They just, I forget the manufacturer, um, if it's like Eminence or it's one of those, but uh, they, they actually really changed for the better my, my Fenders because the Fender, I had the, what they call the yellow label Jensen's, which are the originals, which sound real sweet and real, a lot of highs and they're real pretty, but for jazz, they were a little too, too much emphasizing high end frequencies and the Cannabis Rex have much more mid-range and a little bass and they just fatten it up, made it sound, you know, kind of like the ideal sound that I wanted really. I mean, the Vibrolux I have right now with the Cannabis Rex, that's pretty much the best sound I've ever got. And I don't even particularly like the sound that much. I mean, my favorite sound, like have an old Gibson amp from the fifties, like Jim Hall used to use and other people, that's my favorite sound, but it's so quiet. It has almost no power that I don't know how they, I think just everybody used to play quieter or they just figured, oh, it's the guitar time to get quiet because they were just so used to like the acoustic guitar that they had just been training guitars quiet. And uh, now we've been training, you know, guitars like a stack of Marshalls and it's super loud. So it's too quiet, but you know, a natural warm amp is really what I want. And then for the guitar, I want something that doesn't feed back, meaning, you know, I don't want it. I want it to have some acoustic life, but I don't want it to be too acoustically lively because the vibration of that will create feedback and loops that will be very unpleasant. So, and I, and I want it to not react too drastically to weather changes. And so I use a plywood, you know, laminated maple, old Gibson, and I use round wound strings, which a lot of guitarists use flat wound strings, that's just sort of personal preference. I like a little more sustain. I like the notes to ring a little longer, which they do with the round wounds. And I like, I just kind of like the feel of them a little better. So, but all of that stuff is so much like just trial and error. You know, you just gotta be willing to fork over the dollars and put in the time to make tests and experiment. And you eventually find, I mean, there's a, you know, you find what, you know, the tools are important they definitely are important, but you also find you sound kind of like yourself, no matter what tool you're using. And so in some ways you just sort of settle for what you need, the minimum requirements of your tools, and then you just don't even think about them.
All right, thank you so much. I'm Andy Brown. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, please like it and please subscribe.